Hello, today I will show you how to get started on your perspective name drawing. First of all, you should have started brainstorming a list of things that you are passionate about or interested in, things you like to do, and you should have a list of hopefully at least eight things. And then you can start sketching things as well. I wrote down a few things that I like to do. I like to make art, read books, bike, camping, and you should try to come up with eight things. And then if you have some time, you can sketch out some ideas of symbols and images that would represent the things that describe you or the things you like to do. We are gonna get started with drawing the name out first. Of course, remember to write your name in the corner and your grade, and then you can flip it over to get started. You will also need a pencil, eraser, and a ruler. All right. The first step is figuring out how many letters you have in your name. Most of you know this. If you have an even number, the middle is going to be between the middle letters. If you have an odd number, the middle letter will be in the center of your paper. First, you can draw a line, a mark, three and a half inches down from the top of your paper. So I lined up my ruler with the top and I'm gonna mark at the three and a half mark on both sides and draw a line across. This will be the top of our letters. You can draw then another mark from that line two inches down and two inches down and connect those marks on either side of your paper. This section is going to contain the letters. And so you'll have to decide where your letters will be. The middle of my paper is at six inches. And so because I have four letters in my name, I'm going to split this up into four sections. Sometimes it's nice to make guidelines first. So this will be where the S is. And you can decide how wide you want your letters to be. I'm gonna make mine one and a half inches long. But if you have more letters in your name, you'll have to make those sections smaller. So there's where the S and the A will go. And I like to sketch out really lightly where my letters are gonna go. One and a half inches over, that's where the I will be. And one and a half inches over, that will be my L. Next, what I'll do is I will fill up my space with my letters, each box. I like to sketch it out first before I use a ruler, and you'll want to make sure your letters are an even thickness so the L can continue into the I box. My S, I'm thinking of the negative space, so I'm cutting off the corners. It's like I'm carving an S out of my box here. I'm going to try to keep it an even thickness. That is the first step. After you write your name out, you're ready to finalize your lines by going over the straight lines with a straight edge or a ruler and just finalizing your curved lines as well. We want to make everything look very precise so that when you create the three-dimensional letters, they look even. So I'll start with this. And just darken your lines a little bit. The curves, you just have to freehand. 
and you can erase any lines that you don't need. If you drew light enough, it's a lot easier to do that. I'm just gonna round out the top and the bottom. You can erase the guide marks that are in between the letters. All right, so I'm going to erase all these extra lines so I only have my letters left. And then you are ready to make your letters three-dimensional. Right now we just have, see the front of the letters. And if you remember in our city drawings last year, we drew the fronts of the buildings first, but then we realized that depending on the angle you're standing at, you can see either at the top of the building or the side of the building. We are going to think of these letters as being block letters. And so we'll start with a vanishing point, like we always start with when we're working with perspective. Your vanishing point should be between an inch and an inch and a half above your letters. I'm going to make it an inch and a half. I would say an inch and a half is best. That is my vanishing point. All of my lines that extend from my corners of my letters need to go to the vanishing point. So watch what happens. I'm going to start at the corners first, these corners. And I'm going to draw lightly to the vanishing point. I'm going to start with the tops of all of my letters. It's better to start with lines that are closer to the vanishing point and then go to lines and corners that are further down. With your letters, what you'll do is you'll pivot your ruler until it hits the edge of the letter. So you can barely see the S showing through. That's the edge that I want. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other side of the S and that's pretty much the same line as the I but that's okay. So there's the edge of the S and the A. Make sure your ruler matches up. I didn't do that the best so I need to make sure it matches up with the vanishing point. All of the tops of my letters I drew to the vanishing point. It's a little bit hard to see right now but what I did was I created the tops of my letters. It's as if we are looking down on this block letter that says Lisa, and here's the front of the L, here's the top of the L. I'm gonna work my way down to other sections. So this corner here, I will also draw that to the vanishing point. If I hit a letter, then I stop. Same thing with this one, if I hit the letter, then I stop. If it runs through the letter, then I don't I don't draw that either. Draw until it hits the letter. I draw this one until it hits the letter. With the Curved letters, it's a little bit trickier, but again, I'm going to find the edge of this curve right here. This point, that will go to the letter as well. And then this curve will go to the vanishing point as well. So here's the bottom. This is this curve of the S that's going back in space. This is this curve going back. And then the middle of the A, this corner, it doesn't interfere with the A, it's in the middle, so I'm going to just draw the inside. This is this little corner inside the A. If I look from this corner, it hits 
in the front of the A, so we wouldn't see that corner through. We have solid letters. This goes from the corner to the vanishing point, but I stop. This corner as well, I would see the inside corner of this A go until it hits the vanishing a letter and then stop. What we have now are three-dimensional letters. We have the front, the sides, the tops. Make sure you erase any lines that you don't need because it can be a little bit confusing when you are trying to shorten your letters. Did anyone notice any line that I forgot on the bottom of my letters? This corner, I can draw a line and it would not interfere with any letter, any front of the letter. So I can draw from this corner to the vanishing point to show that inside edge of the eye. And then I will stop. So here's the right side of the eye right here. Here's the top of the eye, top of the S, top of the A, side of the A. This is this inside curve of the S as well. If you would like to shorten your letters, we did this last year with our shapes in one point perspective and our buildings. If you would like to shorten your letters, remember what happens on the front of the letter happens further towards the vanishing point. So if I want to shorten this I, I would raise my ruler up, copy that line, and draw a horizontal line across. Same thing with the I. If it's horizontal here, I would draw a horizontal line across. Since the S has a curve here, I would draw a curve to match that S. And the A, the, it's a horizontal line, so I would draw a horizontal line across. I can erase my extra lines then, and you can see the tops of my letters look like they match the width and the type of line, just like the front of the letters. After that, then I go from that corner, just like this one is vertically down, this corner should be vertically down as well. It would go down to this corner, which is behind the I, so I don't need to add anything else for this horizontal line in the, I, in the L. Same thing with the I. It's all blocked, everything that happens behind this part is blocked so I don't need to change that at all. This part of the A, it's a diagonal line. So I'm going to copy that diagonal line. When I hit the S, then I know to stop. I would encourage you to shorten your letters. It's pretty simple. You don't have to do too much with the bottom if you make the letters pretty long. Then you are ready to start adding your detail to express who you are and what you're interested in.